Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the Psalms today from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord? Who is seated on high? Who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with princes of His people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, Savior of your people and hope of the world. Grant us favor and listen as we pray. Let our prayer dwell on your redeeming sacrifice, that in all things we render you grateful praise. Uphold your church, Lord, that we may resolutely labor to, to create a more humane world. Strengthen us to be faithful disciples this day. Fortify the weak in spirit. Raise up those who have fallen. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair and let them never be parted from you. Remember us, Lord, in your kingdom as we say the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, our text for today is from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16, uh, the parable of the workers in the vineyard. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. And when he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing out on the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those who were hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. And when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, The last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give the last the same as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Word of God for the people of God. So God gave an old man everything. And he tried to give it away. And every time he tried to give it away, the old man seemed to get more. There was a manipulating and deceptive opportunist who, despite his manipulation, despite his deception, was blessed beyond measure. A jealous and unethical band of brothers on the brink of starvation were given the keys to a storehouse of goods, of treasures, by the very one that they once abused. 
a socially and ethnically confused killer, was given the opportunity to lead one of the greatest expeditions in the history of humanity. A playboy with a penchant for violence was given superhero strength, and even though he was a poor steward of that gift, when it mattered the most, he found favor with God. An immoral and murderous ruler was promised a perpetual legacy for his kingdom. A pagan war hero was healed from a life-altering disease. Life isn't fair, is it? In Matthew chapter 20, uh, Jesus teaches a parable on the hills of an encounter that he had with who we sometimes describe as the rich young ruler. And after that conversation that Jesus had with that young ruler where he asked him to forsake and to sell all that he had and to follow him and the ruler went away sorrowful, Peter asked one of those questions. What's in it for us? In Matthew 19, 27. So Jesus followed up that conversation with Peter and the disciples with a somewhat perplexing and troubling parable. It's a parable that doesn't fit well with middle-class Protestant work ethic types. It's not fair. It's not just. It doesn't meet our standards of equity or justice. And in hearing this parable, I would suspect that most of us tend to side with the protesting all-day workers. We deserve better. We deserve more. We've done more. But to me, what is so striking about this parable is the 11th hour workers, the ones who came on at 5 o'clock. Have we ever considered them in this parable? Most likely, if you're like me in your formative years, this scene played out before us often on the playground. Two people are selected as captains, and the rest are lined up and drafted one by one. First go the fast kids, and the cool kids, and the strong kids, and the smart kids. And then, as the draft goes on, there's always a few who are left. The annoying kids, the unathletic kids, the clumsy kids, the new kid, the outcast, the weird guys. You know who I'm talking about. The ones that nobody wants. And in this parable, there's a group of people who are hanging around at 5 o'clock, still wanting to work. Nobody wanted them. As he asks the question, the master comes and asks the question of why are you still here? Their answer was this. We're the skinny kids, the annoying kids, the new kid, the outcast, the slow kid. We're the weird ones, you know. The one that no one wants. And so the boss agrees to hire them for just a little while, maybe an hour or so. They agree to go to work with little expectation. At least they're on the team. And the boss will be nothing other than fair, whatever that meant to them and whatever that means to us. When the time came to distribute the pay, the last ones hired were the first ones to get paid. And much to the surprise of all of us and probably much to the disdain of most of us, the one-hour workers got a full day's pay. The weird kid got to be on the winning team. Surely, surely we're happy about that, aren't we? We've got to be thinking, what a gracious and kind and benevolent boss we have. I am so glad that I got to work for him today. I'm sure we feel the same way. We are so thrilled that God blessed an old man named Abraham who tried to give the farm away and God just kept giving him more. I'm sure that we're equally elated that Jacob who manipulated and connived and deceived his way through life was blessed beyond measure. And I'm sure we're thankful that Jacob's sons who abused their younger brother Joseph got to reunite with him and had access to all the treasures of Egypt. I'm sure we're equally excited that Moses, who killed and ran away and didn't want to listen to God and tried to resist God, got to lead this incredible expedition that we call Exodus. And Samson, Samson, he's in the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. 
that long-haired playboy who had a penchant for violence, who God blessed with incredible strength even at the end of his life. And what about David? The one after God's own heart. The one who murdered, who committed adultery, who lied, who covered things up, who God said, your throne will last forever. I know we're excited about that. And Naaman, a pagan warlord, and God cleanses him from leopard. As I think about this parable, I am sure that we all recognize that without God's grace, none of us will be here. None of us would be blessed. None of us would have the opportunities to be in His church. And I'm equally sure that all of us would, learn, would love to learn to be content and to be grateful with what God provides for us. Dietrich Bonhoeffer mentioned that grace wasn't cheap. But I'm sure glad that grace isn't fair. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the unfairness of grace. For your willingness to give what we don't deserve. For your willingness to put up with us when we think we deserve more. And yet you keep giving to us and keep blessing us. Help us, Father, learn to be content and to be grateful for the grace that you have given us through Jesus. And we are grateful that grace is not fair. It's through Jesus our Savior, I pray. Amen.